Hey everyone, it's CL. Welcome to my next installment of Tales from the Stacks. This is the mini series that I got going on, which I share either a story or just like a little behind the scenes snippet of my experience of working in a library. And if you didn't see my last video, do check out the link down below. But I worked part time at a library while I was in college. And the story that I'm going to share with you all today is the scariest thing that has ever happened to me because of working at a library. And one of the things that I really loved about working in a library was that you came across a lot of interesting people and and you of course have your regulars and as the regulars start to see you more often they start to open up more and it was very common that like someone will just come to the counter in, if you're not busy with anyone they'll come to the counter and just kind of chat with you and tell you about their day tell you about what they're researching tell you about whatever it happens to be on their mind and one of that's one of the things that i really enjoyed there was this one person in particular who would come in every day this person came in every day to the library and he seemed really nice he would come to the counter and he would talk to me about random things you know like where he's going that day um, how he goes to the gym after going to the library and all that sort of stuff right very surface level things and I started to get used to him coming into the library whenever he would come in. I would like wave and smile and be like, oh yeah, this I recognize this guy. He's one of our regulars, right? And at the school I went to, because I worked at the library uh, while I was in college, he was also an alumni. So he was very familiar with the university I went to and we would talk about it and he would talk about his experiences and the classes he took and he would say like how he worked really hard to get good grades, that sort of thing, right? Um, so I thought he was a really nice guy. Um, but then I started to notice like really, really small things. There was there was one time in particular where he was recommended um, a book from another person and he had the intentions of checking it out but he forgot to he put it in his bag but he forgot to check it out so of course when he went to go walk through the doors so the alarm went off and he came back and he was so angry because he was angry with himself he's like oh my gosh I'm so embarrassed but it wasn't like that kind of reaction where you're embarrassed and you kind of want to like it wasn't me no he was angry he was like a, he was really angry about it and I try to like uh lighten the mood by saying a joke and he, he got even um, well, I wouldn't say he got angrier, but he, he was just kind of short and you could see like his, the expression in his face changed so quick for something that wasn't even a big deal. Like people set off the alarm at the library all the time. Um, so that was one incident that made me think like, huh, maybe there's something more to this guy. Maybe he has like a temper or something, right? And then it started to, something happened. And before I go more into my story, when I tell you about this, you were probably going to think that I'm like the dumbest person on the planet. And I know I use this excuse a lot, but I was very young. I was in college. I was very young. I just, it's the first time I'm experiencing these things in my life and I didn't know how to handle a situation, right? So, um, and I agree with you. If you say, oh my gosh, you're like the dumbest person on the planet. I agree with you in hindsight. There's a lot of things that I would and should have done differently. So now um, going back to the story. So after work, it was very common that I would walk back to my dormitory. And I don't think at that time I had a car or anything. So I would walk back. That's normal. People walk around everywhere. Um, and this particular night, I noticed that he was walking with me. Uh, once I left the library, he was walking with me. And I was like, oh, OK, maybe I had thought that he was just going to walk a short ways and he'll be like oh okay I gotta go um but no he kept walking with me so I thought that was a little strange and I was getting closer closer and closer to my dormitory and um he is an alumni of the school so I guess it's not unusual for alumni to also come to the campus because they do get to use uh some of the resources as like a perk to be being an alumni right and what was different about this day, not only was he walking back with me further than I expected him to, but like he put his arm around me and like squeezed my shoulder really hard. And the reason why I'm saying that doesn't sound like a big deal, but the reason I'm saying that 
is because it was very unusual for him to touch me in that sense because there was always that desk of separation that I would be on one side of the desk and he'd be on the other side and we weren't that close. I mean, when we would chat at the library, it was very surface level things. We did not see each other outside of the library. We did not talk to each other in depth. If anything, he would talk to me and I would listen. Um, so yeah, and I was starting, the closer I got to my dorm, the closer, the, the more anxious I started to get. Like, this is weird. Like, this isn't normal. Why isn't he going off in his own direction? Um, I, and I, you know, I'm like a deer in headlights. I don't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. So I just kept walking towards the direction I was supposed to go, right? And um, when you go into the dormitories, this is where I thought for sure he was going to take off because you have to swipe your ID to unlock the doors to the dormitories where I went to school. And I thought for sure he'd be like, okay, bye. But I swiped my card and I went in and the door was closing and he rushed to get in as well. And I'm in full panic mode in my mind. I'm like, oh my gosh, this isn't normal. And I didn't know what to do. I passed by the lobby. We were in the lobby and my dorm was very close. I was so close to being somewhere where I can like close the door and lock the doors, right? So I ran into a group of girls that I uh, knew at that time and I was like trying to stay casual and I was chatting. I was like, oh, hey, and just talking about different things. And they naturally were talking to him and he was talking to this girl in particular. And I thought at the time, I was like, oh, well, this is my opportunity since my place is so close while he, his attention is focused somewhere else, maybe I can kind of walk really fast to my dorm and shut the door and lock the doors, right? So that's what I did. Um, I'm not sure if that was the right move, but I did. Like he, he looked like he, his attention was fully engaged in this conversation with this other person. So I just booked it. I didn't run, but I walked very fast to my dorm. And what happened was he totally ended his conversation mid-sentence with that girl and walked really fast to catch up with me. He was like right behind me. He's really tall, so his strides were longer than mine. And I was in full panic mode because I had already committed that I was going to go in my dorm room and lock the doors. So I unlocked the door as fast as I could. I went inside and I pushed the door closed but he had put his, fo his foot in the doorway so I couldn't close it all the way and he is pushing the door to get in. I'm pushing the door to keep him out and uh, this is where things get kind of crazy. Well, not crazy in some sense, but this is where I start to get, this is where I start to really panic because I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy has followed me home and he's trying to get into my room, right? And my roommate wasn't home. It was just me and he's pushing to get his way in and he's like trying to convince me to let him in. He's like, oh, well, I just want to see your room. Just show me your room and then I'll leave. And I was trying to think of like every excuse in the book. I was like, oh no, you can't. Um, I don't want to let you in because it's I don't allow boys in my room. I use that excuse. And he was like, oh, well, we can leave the door open. Just let me in and see your room. It's not a big deal. And, and, and um, he was trying to say everything he could to convince me to let him in, right? And I was like, no way. And I was terrified. The more this is going on, it probably lasted less than a minute, but I was in full panic mode and I didn't know what to do. I was saying everything in the book to keep him out and um, I was terrified that he would push his way in because I was, how tall, I'm 5'3", and at that time I, lay, I weighed less than like 120 pounds, and he was six foot one, and he obviously goes to the gym. There's no way. If he wanted to get in, he could have absolutely pushed me out of the way. His foot was inside the room, Half his body was in the room. He was sticking his head in the room and it was weird. It was not normal. Um, and if there's anything, if there's any point in time that really 
enhance my spirituality. And I know some of you watching may not be spiritual people, but this is it, this is for me something that happened which really enhanced my spirituality. The last thing I could do was to say a quick prayer to make this guy go away for some sort of help, right? No one else was there. I was by myself. And I said a very quick prayer. It was very simple, like, please God make him go away. I said that in my head and just like that, he changed his mind and was like, okay, well, will you call me? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll call you, I'll call you. And he's like, don't you need to write it down? I said, I have a good memory. And he's like, starts to say his number. He says it like three times so I can remember it. And I'm like, okay, okay. I'm so grateful that he did not ask for me to recite it back because I would not have remembered it. I was not hearing anything he was saying. I just wanted him to go away. So finally, he takes himself out of the doorway so I can close the door, I lock the door, and I just crumple by the door and I start crying because I was so petrified, right? I was afraid. So I cry for a while and mind you, I guess I should have, in hindsight, I guess I should have reported it in some way. And I guess at that time I was a little torn because I was like, well, technically he didn't do anything but follow me home and I, I wasn't sure if I was just over exaggerating in my mind and I know that sounds stupid right um, and I think a lot of girls in college or people in college sometimes are in situations where they they are so taken off guard they're so petrified that they're just not sure what to do so anyways after I'm done crying I slowly open the door make sure he's not around and I run to my friends dorm room and I told her everything and she was horrified and she was like you can sleep here if you want to sleep here and um, I was relieved that I at least told someone right so I was glad that that incident was over um, but in the grand scheme of things it wasn't over so the next day I had work at the library um, I think it was I was supposed to call him the next day. He was like, call me tomorrow. And I was like, okay. And, but I didn't. And I was just so relieved. Sorry, there's like something like, I was just so relieved that he was gone. And then the next day when I was at the library, I was by myself at the desk because it was quiet. Um, everybody was doing their own things. Nobody needed help. And I was by myself at the desk sitting at one of the computers at the desk. And he came in and stood by the counter and he was very angry and I was like oh gosh and he was like did you forget something I had I was just quiet right and he's like you were supposed to call me yesterday and you didn't call me but believe me I wasn't sitting by the phone waiting I have other things to do and he was really really angry and the way he was like towering over me and how he like spat out his words it was I was scared and then I was so scared at that time I was it was um, chilly I was wearing a jacket and my hand was shaking uh, I had my hand on the mouse of the computer and my hand was shaking and I didn't want him to see that I was afraid so I pulled my sleeve my jacket sleeve over my hand so he wouldn't see that I was shaking and then um, I thought I was safe behind the counter but he looked around and see that no one was there. He took it upon himself to come behind the counter right behind me. And he like towered over me and he got really close to my ear and was went on like this rant about how rude I was for not calling him and that I should have called him and all this other stuff that kind of I was I heard his words at the time, but at the same time. I don't remember them because I kind of blocked it out in some sense. I, I'm, I was scared. This isn't normal. And um, then he leaves. Like, I guess he made his point and he left. So I ended up telling one night my manager above me and she was horrified. Um, and t after that, I never walked home. I always had my roommate pick me up or a friend pick me up um, or, you know, someone at the library would drive me home that I knew so and I'd like to say that that was the last time I seen him but it wasn't I ran into him again I think I ran into him the next year after that 
um, I was at the grocery store with my roommates to load up on groceries and I ran into him at the grocery store because he was using the ATM uh, at the store and we just happened to run into each other and he was all ha uh, he seemed happy at the time I seemed horrified and um, he said hi and I said hi just trying to be nice you know this person's freaking crazy and trying to be nice and then I think he might have said something something like hi how you doing or something and I said good something it was very short and then he left and I went on my way with my roommates and the next day he came to the library he has not been in there for a very long time at least when I've been there and he was like the other day when I seen you at the store and we locked eyes I felt the connection between us um, something to that extent and he was like I know that day I freaked you out because I could see it in your eyes that day or something like that and he's like but I felt that we really had a connection and a bond between us but if you want me to leave you alone just say that you want me to leave you alone and you'll never see me again but I feel that me and you have something really special and I was like I didn't say anything but um, when he was waiting for his answer I said something to the extent that there was nothing between us and he just kind of said okay and he like left right away I don't know if he was mad or offended or what I didn't care I just wanted him to go away so yeah I think after that I didn't see him again but even to this day whenever I'm in that area whenever I'm back on campus just kind of reminiscing of where I went to school I always get a little paranoid that I'll run into him again. I hope I never see him again. I hope I never come across his name. And when that incident happened, that one day when he followed me home, I didn't tell the people I should have told, maybe. Maybe I should have told security as like a heads up, but I didn't. Um, but in hindsight, I probably should have just as a heads up to them. Um, and, but I'm glad that I didn't totally stay silent, right? But that is a lesson learned on my part, so at least I know what to teach my daughter going forward. But um, one of the things I did is I wrote down, at that time I was really big into like having a diary and a journal, like a daily journal where I wrote everything down in. I had written everything that happened down. I wrote out everything I knew about him and I bookmarked it. I knew, I, I gave a full on description of um, what he looked like. I knew his name because at the library when he checks out things I could see his name on there and I knew how old he was because he had brought it up before in conversation. He was 29 years old at that time and I had bookmarked the page in my diary and I told my friends that if I ever go missing please check out this bookmarked page here uh, just in case this person might have something to do with it because he did follow me home. So um, but thankfully, I am perfectly fine, so I'm grateful for that. But that's one of the downsides to working at a library, working anywhere, right? Um, is that you might come across a creeper. As much as many people I have come across that were um, really nice, really interesting, um, he, I would have to say, was the only one out of my four years that I, I worked there part time. He was the only one that was really creepy and abnormal. So yes, that is my story for this video that um, my scariest experience from working at the library. So yeah, that's all I have. So let me know what you think down below in the comments and stay tuned for my next one. Thank you and see you later.